everyone. I'm Melissa Cashin. And I'm Alexander Kling. We're PhD students at Purdue University in the EAPS department, that's Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Science. And we both study planetary science. And today, we're going to teach you all how to make a crater. So a crater is formed when an object in space, like um, an asteroid, hits another body and then makes a big hole in the ground. And that hole can change in size and shape from a variety of different factors. Some of those can include the size of the asteroid that's hitting the object. It could depend on the speed at which it's hitting it. Also the angle that it's hitting the surface. So in this activity, we're going to experiment with all those different factors to see the different kinds of craters that we can form. So we also see craters all across the solar system. Uh, behind us, you should be able to see a few images that show craters throughout the solar system. One is from Meteor Crater in Arizona in the United States on Earth. Other examples of places where we see craters are on the moon. The moon is also covered in craters. And one crater in particular that demonstrates something really nice that we'll show you today is Tycho Crater. Tycho Crater has these bright crater rays, which are ejecta, which we'll talk about a little bit more in the activity. We also see craters in a few different objects, like Mercury, the, uh, the first planet closest to the sun, as well as asteroids, like this one, which is called Lutetia. OK, so now Alex and I are going to show you how to make a crater in just a few short steps with just these ingredients. So the supplies that you need for this experiment are some nice aluminum tray, something to keep everything inside, some all-purpose flour, white flour, uh, some cocoa powder. This is, in my opinion, the best smelling experiment because of it. Um, a colander or something to help you sift the, the powders uh, into the container, as well as just some small objects to help you make the craters themselves. We have some marbles here of a few different sizes, a ping pong ball, a baseball, uh, even a rock. And then we also have a ruler to do the measurements for uh, the activity itself. And maybe the most essential is the trash bags for an easy cleanup because this experiment does get a little messy. So we have our garbage bag down to protect the table and we'll just start pouring in our ingredients into the tub. So first goes the flour. You can do it with the colander or just straight in. The flour will be a thicker layer at the bottom. See, that's why we have the trash bag, because it's already spilling a little. And so then you could just shake it up, try to get it to be an even surface at the bottom. That's good. And then you can All right, next comes the cocoa powder. You just put it into the colander and sift it around to help make it a more even layer over the flour. And you can add extra things. Um, to this mix if you want, if you have like sprinkles or something to make the craters look more interesting. <laughs> now we have our surface of a planet with our two layers and we can start making craters. So now we have our variety of impactors. We have some nice big metal marbles, some smaller glass mar marbles of a couple different sizes. We also have baseball if we really want to get crazy, ping pong ball, and just a normal rock. So, We also have this ruler so we can measure the diameter of the different impactors and compare the different size craters that they make. Mm -hmm. So you can first measure your diameter. That's from one side of the ball to the other. So that's about two and a half centimeters or about one inch uh, in diameter. And then if you want to measure the height that I drop it from. Sure. So that's 12 inches. <laughs> OK. So we could just start from the top and then just drop it in. And so we can see that it made a crater, which is just a big hole in the ground caused by the impacting object. In this case, it's a metal ball. That could be like a, a metal-rich asteroid. You can also see um, there's ejecta. That's uh, the flour underneath the cocoa powder that's been pushed out from this uh, crater being formed, which we also see in real life, like on the moon. 
You can also see on the side here, so there are some big chunks of the cocoa powder that have been thrown off. Those could be like big boulders that can get flown miles from where the, the crater is formed. And then we also see some of these cracks forming around the sides, and those can be uh, caused from the crater due to stress that breaks the rock around it. So we can make some more craters too. Let's grab a smaller marble. Sure. Want to measure first? Sure. You want centimeters? Uh, we could do centimeters. This is a small one. That one's about one centimeter in diameter. Okay. And we can we can drop this one from a little higher. Okay. Well, we can do it from the same height first <laughs> so, to compare the sizes. So go and drop. So this one, you could see there's a little little bit of material flying out, but not as much as the, the bigger impactor. And it's a little more of a simple shape. It's just a, more of a little hole in the ground. So now we can try experimenting with some of the other factors. We can use some bigger materials. We can drop it from higher. Um, we can also add extra velocity to it. And all of those factors can make uh, the craters bigger and allow us to see different effects as well. So we could do the, the metal one again. Sure. We could drop it from even higher. And this one, this is why we have the garbage bag. It might make a bit more of a splash. So that one is a really nice demonstration. Now you can see the flower underneath very clearly. It has been overturned onto the surface, and it's spraying out in different directions. These are the, uh, some streaks that you can see, uh, such as on the, on the moon. You can see bright crater rays around a few craters, such as Tycho and Copernicus. You can start playing with the, the different sized objects as well. Another uh, thing you can try is making a crater at different angles. Mm -hmm. so. So we can start taking some of our objects out carefully so that we still preserve the craters, maybe a little more carefully than me. But yeah, we can throw craters in at different angles because objects are flying around in space at any direction and can come in and hit a planetary body from any angle. So we can throw one like that. And you can see it's still kind of made a bowl shape, but the ejecta was uh, shooting off in this direction more so than in the other ones that the ejecta went in every direction. What also sometimes happens when you have a, uh, an impactor coming in at a very low angle is that it could even skip and make multiple craters. We'll see if I'm able to replicate that. Not quite, but <laughs> sometimes that's something that you can see on planetary surfaces and they're called crater chains. But now you can see the surface is starting to get messed up a lot more. And Missy and I, we can together just start adding in a bunch more craters and then just start destroying the surface. There are some planetary surfaces that have a lot more craters than others on them. That was a big one too. So now, that one showed us something really interesting. Since that crater happened last, the material that it threw out covered a lot of the other craters in the area. And so that's something that we call stratigraphy, basically looking at the different layers of the materials. And because the, la the materials from this crater covered up the other ones, we know that this crater was actually younger than the other craters that formed. And you watched us make all those craters, so you know that for sure as well. Another thing was that, unlike all the other things that were spheres, this rock is not really spherical. Not every object in space is a perfect sphere, um, but that crater that it made was still a pretty nice circle. So even though you can have non-spherical objects that aren't shaped like a ball, they can still create a crater that is shaped like a nice, perfect circle. And this activity is easy to continue doing once you mess up the whole terrain. You can retrieve your marbles because you don't want to lose them. And then we could just make a new layer with all of the with flour and cocoa powder again to reset the whole surface. And so this could actually happen in nature as well. 
you can have things like lava flows that just pour over a surface and cover up old craters that existed. And so that's something that's hard to determine the age of a surface just by looking at the number of craters in, in the event that something like that happens. And now we have a new surface that you can continue doing the activity on. We could also have very big impacts. Uh, we ha have a few examples of these on Earth. There's one that was thought to have killed all the dinosaurs around 250 million years ago. Um, and those can have large scale effects on the entire planet. But one thing we want to show here is just like the energy that is involved with those. So this is a baseball, the biggest object we have so far. It's going to make a bit more of a mess, but let's see what happens. I'll try to catch it too. So yeah, sorry Missy. <laughs> um, it affected almost the whole area, lots of debris flown out. But one thing that's interesting is some of that debris and that ejecta can also escape the entire atmosphere of the planetary body or just escape the gravitational attraction. Some of that material can be traveling so fast that it can escape the, the, the planet that it was from. And so that material can then make its way to Earth and fly into our atmosphere, and we know those as meteorites. Those bits of rocks that we collect on Earth called meteorites are pieces of other planets that have broken off due to these types of impacts.